Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Brothers and sisters in Islam, I pray you all well. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, bless you all and bless your health and bless all your affairs. Ameen ya rabbil alameen. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala shower his divine mercy upon all those who've passed away. Ameen. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala be pleased with us the day our time to return to him comes. Ameen. Brothers and sisters in Islam, the standout lesson from the Taraweeh today was none other than the reality. The reality of life. And that is that every soul shall taste death. Kullu nafsin da'iqatul maut. Every soul shall taste death. Every soul should walk through a door called death. Everything created came into existence with an expiry date. And everything that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created will return to him subhanahu wa ta'ala. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, when he teaches us this reality, he tells us that this life is not an end in and of itself, rather it's a means to an end. It's a means to either success or failure. Success being Jannah or failure being Jahannam. For Allah, after telling us about death, he says, فَمَنْ زُحْزِحَ عَنِ النَّارِ The one who saves himself or herself from the fire. وَأُدْخِلَ الْجَنَّةِ And is placed into Jannah. The one who is saved from the hellfire. And the one who is placed into Jannah, فَقَدْ فَاسْ Has indeed succeeded. Has absolutely succeeded. This is what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us, brothers and sisters in Islam. And further on, as the Imam recited, ayat pertaining to inheritance were recited. And a couple of days ago, we discussed the, that, you know, the, 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 the difficulties of wealth on the soul of a person. And sometimes people transgress because they have this wealth in their hearts. And Allah teaches us about inheritance and warns us against transgressing with regards to these laws by lacking diligence with regards to the rules of inheritance and not distributing the wealth as Allah has decreed. Don't be a servant of your desires. Be a servant of Allah. And when Allah gives us this warning, Allah then tells us about boundaries. Why does Allah tell us about these boundaries? Well, because brothers and sisters in Islam, if you take uh, this discussion back uh, a few seconds, we spoke about success. And... Really, if you understand being entered into Jannah and being saved from the hellfire, then you will see its relationship to taqwa. And we are in the month of taqwa. لَعَلَّكُمْ تتقون. Fast so that perhaps you may attain taqwa. And taqwa, as Ibn Hajar al-Asqalani said, هُوَ أَن تَجْعَلَ بَيْنَكَ وَبَيْنَ عَذَابِ اللَّهِ وِقَايَةً A taqwa is to place between you and the punishment of Allah a barrier that prevents you from the punishment. How? By doing the good and staying away from evil. By doing that which pleases Allah and staying away from that which displeases Allah. By remaining within the boundary. So Allah tells us after the ayat on inheritance about the boundaries of Allah. And whenever you look in the Quran, whenever these boundaries are mentioned, you find that if Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions boundaries after telling us about halal, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He says, تِلْكَ حُدُودُ اللَّهِ فَلَا تَعْتَدُوهَا These are the boundaries of Allah. Do not cross them. When He tells us about halal, He tells us these are Allah's boundaries. Do not cross them. You can go right up to the boundary. You can smell the boundary. You can touch the boundary. You can hold the boundary. You can sit on the boundary. But do not cross the boundary. Because after it you enter into haram. But whenever Allah tells us about haram, He then says these are the boundaries of Allah. Do not go near it. It's different to the previous discussion. The previous discussion, when Allah tells us about halal, He says, these are the boundaries of Allah. Do not cross it. So go near it. Hold it. Don't cross it. But when it comes to haram, Allah says, these are the boundaries of Allah. Do not go near it. Do not flirt with the boundary. Stay away from the boundary. Because such is the nature of haram. If you get close to it, your desire to touch it, will be greater. So Allah tells us not to even go close to those boundaries. So stick within the limits, the parameters, 
the rules of life. We are servants of Allah, not of our desires. And every soul shall taste death. And this soul will stand in front of Allah. This is the reality. An answer for everything done. And everything not done that was supposed to be done. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect us. Brothers and sisters in Islam, back to the basics before the grave. The grave is the reality. Let's get back to the basics. You know, every evening or most evenings we talk about, you know, using this month to recalibrate the soul, to recalibrate the heart, to recalibrate the mind, to recalibrate the body, to recalibrate the nafs. Yes, we have to do it. And sooner rather than later, sooner rather than later, let's get back to the basics before the grave. Yes, life throws so many curveballs at us, so many responsibilities at us. There's this happening, there's that happening, there's, this needs to be done, that needs to be done. We have to make sure we don't, we, we, that we do not become victims of time. Because if you become a victim of time, as Allah tells us about the people before us, the heart will become hardened. And if the heart becomes hardened, Allahul Musta'an, we will cross the boundaries that Allah has set. And only disaster awaits us later on. Reduce this month well. And don't be your worst enemy by making soft excuses for your retrogression, for your lack of progress. No, brothers and sisters in Islam, be your best friend by being your choicest critic. Right? In Africa, we say, call a spade a spade, not a big spoon. Do exactly that with yourself. Before the grave comes, before the angel of death arrives, before you see that angel that comes for you, and people around you won't see this angel, and they'll be carrying on like nothing's wrong, and you will be in that state of shock. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect us before that day. Back to the basics before the grave. Turn back to your articles of faith. La ilaha illallah, Muhammadur Rasulullah. How are you with the injunctions of this kalima? How are you with the laws of Allah? Are you doing something that you shouldn't? Are you not doing something that you should? What about the major sins? How close to, you, to them are you? How far away from them are you? Because one of the other ayat we learned is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala teaching us that if you leave the major sins, then Allah will forgive your minor sins. Do we even know what the major sins are? I've said enough inshallah and I think the point is clear. Brothers and sisters in Islam, at the end I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to only grant us death whilst he's pleased with us and whilst he has decreed that he will give us a grave which is a garden from the gardens of Jannah and whilst, that, whilst he has decreed that he will grant us shade on the day of Qiyamah uh, underneath his arsh and whilst he has decreed that he will give us our book of deeds in our right hands may Allah ease our standing on the day of Qiyamah and give us glad tidings that we are from the people of Jannah Ameen, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala send angels from Jannah to collect our soul and let that be the first glad tidings to help ease our shock and fear when we see the angel of death. Ameen, Ya Rabbil Alameen. Brothers and sisters, I love you all for the sake of Allah. I ask Allah to shower His mercy on you and I ask you to ask Allah to shower His mercy on me. Barakallahu feekum. May Allah preserve us in His obedience. Ameen. Until next time, Salamullahi alaikum wa rahmatuhu wa barakatuh.